Welcome to the third and final installment of my LEGO Fortnite Frostlands Village build tutorial. We're going to start off by creating a pathway that is three wide, spanning from your front door all the way to your building. Now, once you destroy all of those tiles, we're going to start laying the 12 by 12 rustic wood floors. Now, once you get to the fourth tile out from the door, as well as the 11th tile out from the door, you're going to want to create a pathway going each way six tiles deep. So destroy six tiles in each direction on the fourth and 11th tile from the door. Now you want to make sure that it is the fourth and the 11th from the door. Otherwise it will mess your build up and you'll have to spend a lot of time tearing down buildings just to move them over one spot. Once you get it all filled in with your rustic wood floors, you can head over to the entrance and replace these sections here with the rustic thin floor so it matches. Now it's time to start building the buildings. Head over to supports in your building parts and go ahead and grab your palatial pillar number one. Now we're going to place these at the end of every pathway lined up with the corner of the pathway with the slit design facing out. These are going to act as your door jams and you want to make sure that you set these on every single pathway. Next, we're going to head over to walls and scroll down to windows and grab the Shoji window number two. Place two Shoji window number twos on the outside of each pillar on each building. Now this is the only time that you are going to use the shoji window number two, so it's better to just place them all now and get it over with. Once that's complete, head back to the wall section and select the palatial corner. Now I would advise using the same palatial corner that you chose to use on the main building from the last video, but you can use whichever you like. Obviously we're going to take these palatial corners and place them on the end of each wall. Then you want to head over to your building parts again, go into walls, scroll down to windows, and grab your shoji window number three. We're going to go ahead and start building the side of our building, and that's going to be three windows wide. After that, as you might have guessed, you want to add your palatial corners, and then go ahead and add four windows to the back side. Fill it in with three more windows like you did on the first side, and it's time to begin roofing the first layer. Head into the roofing section, grab your Kawara hip, and go ahead and snap one on on every single corner. Make sure that you stand straight out from the corner so it snaps on correctly, and then fill the rest in with Kawara roof number fives. Now, the good thing about these buildings is that these roof number fives are the only roofing pieces that you're gonna need. Once you get that layer complete, go ahead and get on the roof and add four palatial corners and fill in the rest of the sections with your shoji window number threes. Luckily on these buildings, the shoji window number three is the only window or wall that you will need since everything fits perfectly, as well as the roof being only Kawara roof number fives and the Kawara hip. So go ahead and fill in every section with your roof number fives and start on the third and final layer of your building. Place your palatial corners on all four corners and go ahead and fill in the sections with the shoji wall number threes or whichever one you chose. Now for this last roof layer, the Kawara hips will fit perfectly, butted up against each other. And once you get the Kawara roof number fives filled in, it's time to finish off the ridge. You can use any ridge you like, but these Kawara ridge number ones fit five of them perfectly up there and it matches the style we did on the first building. It's that simple. And what you wanna do from here is go ahead and build three more buildings that are exactly the same, starting off with the pillars that you placed at the entrance of each building. Once you have all four buildings complete, it's time to start the garden. Go ahead and open your building parts and head to the fencing section. And you want to grab your rustic railing number two and snap them on every single corner and pillar on all four buildings. Now head back into the same section and grab your rustic railing number three and place that on the outside of those rustic railings that you just placed. Follow those up with the rustic railing number two and snap it right on and it should fit perfectly. Do this on the front section of every single building. Now we're going to build the main garden, which consists of rustic railing number twos and rustic railing number ones. First, line the rustic railing number two up with the corner of the pathways and snap on a rustic railing number one onto each one. From there, grab another rustic railing number two and put those on the inside of each garden section. This next part is important. This is gonna be the spacing of your garden sections. So the easiest way to do this is to snap on a rustic railing onto the existing garden section and tap over six spaces. After that, take a rustic railing number two and a rustic railing number one and place those on the outside of the railings that you just set. Do this on both sides of the first pathway near the entrance and only on the inside of the second pathway. 
as the, the other side of the pathway farthest from the door is going to have something else. Repeat these steps on both sides of your base. Now we are going to add the other row of our garden. First, snap a rustic railing number two onto the end of the existing garden and tap it over nine times. This will create the correct spacing and give you the best look possible. Once you place that rustic railing number two down, go ahead and repeat what we did earlier. Again, snap on a rustic railing number two and tap it over six times to create the correct spacing and repeat this on both sides for every garden bed. These garden beds hold six garden pots. They should fit in perfect. As you see here, I'm placing six down to show you. So make sure that you have the correct spacing. Next, we're going to head over to the fence section, scroll all the way to the bottom and grab the palatial corner and place that at the corner of this pathway. Then we're going to add a rustic railing number three, followed by another palatial corner. This will line up perfectly with your garden bed on the other side. Next, you want to make sure that you line up the palatial corner with the other side of the garden bed. The easiest way to do this is set it right next to it and tap it all the way over. Then you want to go ahead and grab a rustic railing number three, snap that on and add the other palatial corner. Pick another rustic railing number three, place it onto that same palatial corner and snap on a rustic railing number one. Then take another palatial corner and place that at the end of the rustic railing number one you just placed. Repeat this on the other side of that fenced area as well as the other side of the base. Now we take a rustic railing number three, snap it onto the corner we placed and add another corner. You can set these up however you want. You actually don't need to use these palatial corners if you don't want to. You can just do straight fence so it matches the garden bed, but I like it better this way. So we're just gonna add a rustic railing number three, a palatial corner, and repeat that process till we get to the end of the building. Repeat this on both sides of your base. And now we are ready to build our pergolas and finish this build up. We have objects as our floor. We are unable to place prefabricated builds, so we're gonna have to do this by hand. Go ahead and head over to building parts and support and grab a pavilion pillar left. You're gonna wanna line this up perfectly with your corner of your fence and tap it over 14 times to the right and 10 times down. This will line it up perfectly in the center. And all you have to do from here is grab your pavilion right and start adding that on. It may be a little tricky to get it lined up because it does not snap, but I'm sure you will figure it out. Repeat this on the other side, tap over 14 times and tap down 10 times. What I like to do is add a campfire underneath these pavilions. The next step is gonna be lighting. You're going to want to go into your furniture section Head over to lighting and grab your ancient street lights. Place these ancient street lights on top of the railing in the center on every single garden section. This is what your base should look like at this point. Literally all that we have left to do here is to place garden plots and plant seeds. For this video, I am not gonna go through all that tedious work. So what I will do is log onto my survival server and show you the original base that I built that is identical to this one. The way that I have this garden set up is that it has six rows and it also has sections in front of the buildings and there are seven crops in the game. So I have each row with the same crop lined up. Now each crop is a different color. So the layout depends on what you like best. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoy your new base. I know there are many upgrades and much more stuff that I could build here. There are a lot of lighting techniques I could use and a lot more lighting that I could add, as well as some other things that I can build to make the space better. Since I don't really use this village, I don't really come here often, so I haven't really thought of upgrading or adding on to this village, but I'm sure you guys will come up with some cool ideas to make it even better. This concludes my three-part tutorial on how to build my LEGO Fortnite Crosslands Village. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.